I said, I don't even know, ma'am. He told me he was going to a Buddhist retreat and never called back. I, when was that, ma'am? A year ago. There were a lot of um, beatings because we would steal for food just to survive. He was physically starved and his body could no longer take the inhumane treatment. Some people in this world are truly born evil and genuinely live their lives without a care in the world for anyone but themselves. Not only that, but they find joy in the suffering of others and go out of their way to inflict that pain and suffering. That is very clearly seen in today's case. What this horrific woman was capable of will surprise and disgust even the most seasoned true crime consumers. So I want to warn you now, proceed with caution as you watch this video. But before we get into it, I wanna make a quick announcement. I have finally expanded my channel onto the podcast platforms, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. I originally was just gonna do Spotify, but I've expanded even more and now I'm available on Apple for those of you who prefer the audio format. If you enjoy my content, please please head over to your platform of choice and maybe give the episodes a listen and a five-star review if you think that's what I deserve. If not, maybe don't leave a review. I believe I already have around 15 episodes uploaded and I will be uploading at least weekly every Sunday so you can start your week outright with some true crime content. I'm so excited to be expanding even more and getting my episodes out to even more of you guys to listen to, so please make sure to go ahead and give them a listen. Okay, so with that being said, let's jump right into this case. Avante Devon is the 63-year-old mother of five adopted children. The family were living in Fayetteville, North Carolina since 2015. We don't know a lot about the family as a whole. We do know that they were all homeschooled. One of the children, London Devon, was adopted in January of 2011. Then Blake Devon and another unnamed sibling were adopted in 2013. According to Blake's birth mother, Blake was placed into foster care due to abuse allegations that she completely denies. So based off of that information, I believe Avante was a foster parent taking children in and adopting them. That's pretty much all I've been able to dig up about the family. The details of this case star in November of 2023 when police received a 911 call from a teenager living within the home who is in the state of a mental health crisis and threatening to take his own life. In the call, the teenager said that his brother has been punching and teasing him all day and he's feeling very suicidal. The dispatcher asked if anyone was in immediate danger and he said, no one except me. He went on to say that he was planning on taking some pills from his mom and then taking them himself. Of course, police responded and intervened so that this 15-year-old boy wouldn't be able to harm himself. After this call, the Department of Social Services got involved and in the days following, they interviewed this teenager along with other family members to get an idea of what exactly was going on within that home. Eventually, family members told officers that they hadn't seen their brother Blake in years. Specifically, the 15-year-old said that he hadn't seen Blake in at least five years, and the last time he saw him, he had a broken arm and is now dead. However, when DSS spoke with other family members, someone claiming to be Blake was at the house saying he was just fine. But after speaking with several other family members, many people were concerned with how the children under Avante's care were being treated. For the months that followed, it seemed like the investigation continued, but not a lot happened because the next thing we hear about in this case is in January of 2024, when Avante calls 911 to report that her then 16-year-old son, Blake, is missing. But this call was apparently a very long time coming. In that 911 call, she said that her son had been missing for over a year at that point. Avante told the dispatcher that he went missing sometime around the holidays in 2022. She said that it was sometime between Thanksgiving and December when she last saw him. She reported that she believes her son has run away. He's generally pretty religious, and for a while, he was going back and forth about doing a Buddhist retreat to learn meditation and things like that. She said Blake is very high-strung and bossy, very independent. 
Her other daughter also did a retreat like this for about six months in the past. So it was totally within the realm of possibilities that Blake would go out and do a retreat like this one too without telling anybody. When asked if Blake has any sort of mental health issues or disorders, she said that he does have static encephalopathy, which is brain damage suffered in utero, often associated with alcohol exposure. Outside of that though, she didn't think he had anything that could seriously impact his decision-making or ability to care for himself. She said that the last time he was seen was in a neighborhood Walmart. After that, she doesn't know where he's been and hasn't heard from him since. Hey, Ben, I'm a mom. What's that? Just your emergency? Um, we can drive. All right. Tell me exactly what happened. No, no, I need to file a missing persons report. All right. So I was called to call on 511. All right. Yes, ma'am. And um, tell me exactly who's missing. Uh, he'll be 18 May 10th. So your 17-year-old son is missing? Yes. Okay. What was he last seen wearing? Oh, goodness. I don't even know, ma'am. He told me he was going to a Buddhist retreat and never called back. I... When was that, ma'am? A year ago. So when he was 16, he told you he was going to a No, no, no. He's, it, I called a year ago. He was like, he was already 17. He just turned 17, I believe. Okay. So you call it a year ago. When did this happen, ma'am? I'm calling now. I understand. It happened. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I understand you're calling now. What I'm trying to determine is when he told you he was going on a Buddhist retreat and never came home. Um, it was a year ago. So, so January 19, 2023? It was somewhere around that, a little before. The, it was on the holidays, so I'd say December. It was between Thanksgiving and December. So he was he was 16 at the time because his birthday's in May, correct? Okay, yes. Okay. okay. All right. Do you think he is a runaway? I think so, but he is generally religious, and he used to go back and forth about a Buddhist retreat and meditation, things like that, but this time he never called back. And my daughter did that once for six months, and she called, so I thought, okay. It's hard. He's very independent, high-strung, and very bossy, so it's not very really unlikely of his character. But yeah, I'm sorry, ma'am, what was your question? I'm very upset here. Oh, I understand you're very upset. Do you think he's a runaway? I would say so, yes. Does he have I, any physical, medical, or mental conditions we need to be aware of? Um, not really, no. When you say not really, what do you mean? Um, he was diagnosed with static encephalopathy when he was younger, but that's it. All right, ma'am? Yes, hi. Okay, so um, where was he at when he went missing? Was he at the Marydale address, or where was he located when he was missing? Um, I don't know where he called me from. I have no idea, to be honest with you, ma'am. Okay, where was I the no last idea. place he, he was seen? Some... Oh, goodness. Uh, I would say a restaurant. What I'm restaurant? just trying to think what's going on. One, one moment, now. I'm trying to backtrack here. Oh, gosh. Oh, the neighborhood mart. The neighborhood I'm mart? Sorry, yeah. The it, Walmart? It's a neighborhood mart. Right. And I believe they closed it. Okay. So they've closed where he was last seen. Okay. Give me just yes. a second. Okay. When did you last see him? When I told you during those holiday times, about a year and a half ago. So what holiday times? The last holiday, it was between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Around 2023 November. or 2022? Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness gracious. 22. Okay. Now, at this point, I know some of you might be wondering how he was missing for over a year if DSS said they saw him at the home during their investigation. Well, it was confirmed that after finding out DSS was getting involved in the family, Avante asked another family member to impersonate Blake. This family member has come forward and confirmed this much to investigators. Then, during the ongoing investigation into Blake's disappearance, police realized that yet another adopted child of Avante's was also missing but never reported. 
Investigators learned that London Devon, who would have been 27 years old at the time, also hadn't been seen in several years. Now, I do want to note that the picture of London that I'm showing you, obviously she looks 11 or 12 years old at the time, nowhere close to 27, which is how old she would have been. That is the last and most recent picture of London. So to me, that just goes to show how little Avante cared for her children if she wasn't even bothering to take pictures of them. Then there was also a third child whose name has not been identified, who is also missing from the home. And I'll get more into that child in just a minute. Not only that, but they found that at least three of the children living within that home had been living in absolutely horrific conditions. The children were starved, beaten, and abused for years before investigators ever got involved. According to some family members, the oldest three children, including Blake and London and that third child that was missing from the home, they were kept in extremely small rooms in total darkness. They weren't allowed to maintain their own hygiene and were given little to no food. The only way they could go to the bathroom was in a small plastic container that wouldn't be cleaned or changed out for several days, weeks, or even months at a time. The only way they were allowed to eat or drink was if they did their paperwork where they would write paragraphs and paragraphs apologizing for their behavior. In addition to the extreme neglect, Avante allegedly also beat the children. She would often beat them to the point of needing serious medical attention, but would always refuse to take them to the doctor. She insisted on providing natural remedies like putting honey on their open wounds and things like that. Through all of this, Avante would always tell the kids that if anything was ever found out, they needed to take the blame because she would get the death penalty and because they were kids, they wouldn't even get in trouble. So they needed to protect their mother. Being locked in the bathroom, having to... Um, if we weren't locked in a bathroom, having to use pails as the um, restroom, there were a lot of um, beatings because we would steal for food just to survive. And the older you got, the more paragraphs you had to do. So by the time I was 15, I was doing from top to the page to the bottom of the page, and that would count as one page. So imagine one page, 2,000 pages. Days at a time, um, it was very horrible. Um, you know, there were days where we didn't go without, with, with showers, we didn't go with baths. Um, the only time we could turn on the bathtub or the sink was to get water. She would just drag you down by your hair and beat you. Of course, after learning everything about what those children had to endure was absolutely horrific. In their investigation, police managed to find one of the children who was missing from the home. I believe this individual was a teenager or young adult at the time who managed to run away from the home to escape the horrific conditions they were forced to live in. And let me tell you, what this person had to tell police was just despicable. So this teenager said that while living in the home with Blake and London, again, they all went through constant abuse and neglect. Well, they claim that Blake actually died all the way back in 2017 when he would have been 10 or 11 years old. At the time, this teenager did still live at the home with their four foster siblings and Avante. They said that after a long period of being starved, tortured, and abused, Blake's little body just couldn't take it anymore and he passed out. All of the children in the home witnessed Blake going unconscious and they begged Avante to get him some medical help, but of course, she refused. After some time, Blake ultimately died from his condition. Then, Avante decided to hide the remains until she could figure out a plan to get rid of his body permanently. Eventually, she forced one of her foster children to go to the store and buy equipment to dismember Blake's body. After that, they dismembered him, put him into a burn pit in the backyard, and burned his body. They then removed any evidence of his death from within the home. After Blake's death in 2017, Avante decided to move the family to a new home. It was during that move that this teenager decided to run away and get as far away from the abuse and torture as possible. 
After being away for about a year or two, they returned back to check in on his siblings, and that is when they realized that then 18 or 19 year old London was now missing. The sibling asked Avante where she was, and she said that she had to send London to a mental institution. I do want to note that at this time, London was legally an adult, but she had disabilities and relied on Avante to care for her. By then, there were only two children, both boys, left in that home. But then, years later in 2023, as I stated before, the Department of Social Services started investigating what was going on within that home after getting that call from one of the boys threatening suicide. After DSS got involved, Avante apparently got back into contact with the teenager who had run away so many years prior and told them what really happened to London. She said that London actually had a seizure and died. The last confirmed sighting of London was back in 2019, so it's thought that this is when she died. She then told the teenager to come back and help dispose of her body and any evidence in that home. Basically, she threatened them, bringing up how they helped get rid of Blake's body. So they agreed and went over to the home to help cover up London's death. They removed the carpet and wood flooring from the home and then took these items to a secluded location to burn them. Then they went back to the home to repaint the walls to cover up any evidence that may have been left behind. Using these statements, of course, police looked further into the home and they confirmed the horrific, disgusting conditions these kids were forced to live in. We don't know exactly what evidence they found, but according to reports, they found, quote, biological evidence that supports the evidence of isolation, torture, and starvation. When this teenager was telling police about what happened to them and their siblings, they informed police of a metal burn barrel that they were going to find in the back of the house. By April 12th of this year, and after searching in that yard, they found one metal barrel with two sets of human remains inside. The barrel contained the body of a male aged between 7 and 10 years old, and the other contained a female between the ages of 15 and 19. Of course, the remains were sent off for DNA testing, and it was confirmed that the female was then 18-year-old London. The other set of remains have not yet been positively identified, but there is a strong likelihood that they do belong to Blake, who again would have been 10 years old at the time of his death. I do also want to note that as a part of the investigation, police ultimately found surveillance video from a local Walmart, which showed Avante along with her two youngest adoptive sons buying a red cooler. That same red cooler was found at the home, and it's thought that Avante used it to hide London's remains from when she first died in 2019 and left them in there all the way until 2023 when DSS got involved with the family. It was after being kept in that cooler for about four years when Avante burned her remains. According to investigators, they can't determine an exact cause of death for London, However, they do believe that she died the same painful, slow, horrific death from starvation and torture as Blake did. In early April, we announced the sad news of two young people, Blake and London Devon, who were reported missing. Since then, the fabled detectives, the FBI agents, have followed hundreds of leads and conducted dozens of interviews. Our investigation has led us to evidence that both Blake and London are currently deceased. As detectives begun to unravel the facts, we discovered five children were adopted by Avante Devon from three different North Carolina counties. In multiple interviews, information was provided detailing appalling conditions at least three of these children apparently grew up in. Avante Devon is said to have kept them all, or kept them in small rooms, in complete darkness at times. They were given little or no food and could earn nourishment through by, quote, doing paperwork. That means they had to write hundreds of paragraphs to apologize for behaving. It is alleged some of the children were also beaten to the point of needing medical care, but only natural cures like honey were given. The investigation uncovered Blake likely passed away <clears throat> while the Devon family lived at the Eichelberger Drive home. We believe he was mentally abused. He was physically starved and his body could no longer take the inhumane treatment. Then, Avante developed a plan to hide Blake's remains 
and she forced another person in the household to participate. They dismembered him and burned his remains. When investigators began to look into Blake's disappearance, they learned that 28-year-old London Devon had also not been seen in quite some time. Interviews uncovered information that a number or a different member of the household had been forced to participate in removing London's body from that home. She is believed to have died in the same painful way, in the same painful, callous manner that Blake died from, little starvation and neglect. Additional information led Fayetteville Police Department's uh, detectives to locate a metal burn barrel when the contents were removed and a methodical process to preserve any evidence inside, partial human remains were found. Forensic testing confirmed the barrel contained separate, two separate sets of human remains. In the last week, the first round of testings confirmed one set of remains belongs to London Devon. Testing on the second set of human remains is ongoing. It probably is true that she had a seizure because that can happen as a result of brain damage from abuse, fevers, and other illnesses, or from starvation and electrolyte imbalance. All of those things can cause seizures, so wouldn't surprise me that Avante decided to sprinkle in a little bit of truth with saying that she had a seizure, but of course left out what caused it, which most likely was the abuse and or neglect. Now, as all of this was happening with Avante being investigated for the disappearances and deaths of her two oldest adoptive children, she was also dealing with another problem at home. Her 95-year-old mother, Leonie Maxwell, suffered a stroke back in November of 2023. This resulted in a hospital stay where she was put on a ventilator and feeding tube requiring round-the-clock care. By February, she was discharged home with her daughter, Avante, who promised to continue providing the care she needed. She would also get a home nurse to make sure that everything was good and to obviously help her with the medical issues that, you know, Avante was not qualified to help her with. But 11 days later, Leonie was readmitted to the ICU with pressure wounds, swelling, dehydration, and sepsis from a UTI. She was unresponsive and unable to communicate at that time. Of course, it's thought that all of these issues are a direct result of Avante not providing the care she was supposed to. Now, I mentioned this in a previous video of mine, but anytime someone develops pressure ulcers, it's from them not being moved or, you know, rolled over in the bed as often as they're supposed to. When you are laying down, whether you're immobilized or not, everyone has bony prominences that will, you know, put pressure on your skin. And if you're left there for a very prolonged period of time, your tissues can break down to the point where you see the bone, like through the skin, the skin is not there, the muscle has broken down, and now you can see the bone. That is how bad pressure ulcers can get. I don't know exactly how bad Leonie's were, but the fact that she had them shows me that she was not being cared for properly. And then obviously the dehydration, swelling, and sepsis from a UTI. If she had sepsis that resulted from a UTI, that obviously meant that nobody provided any sort of care or antibiotics for the UTI, so that developed into a blood infection which obviously can be deadly. So once again, Avante was not providing the care that she was supposed to, that she promised to. For the days that followed her readmittance, doctors and hospital staff were unable to get into contact with Avante to discuss important medical decisions. She wasn't at her home and she couldn't be reached by phone. Because of this, the hospital put in a request to give the Department of Social Services control over Leona's medical decisions. They said that Leonie is in such bad condition that something as small as a missed phone call to Avante can be the difference between life and death for her mother. This request went to court where Avante argued that she couldn't be reached because she was investigated for the disappearances of her children. She was forced to stay in a hotel while her home was searched and she handed over her cell phone to be investigated so she physically couldn't get the calls. She actually blamed her mother's poor condition on the home nurse, who she said fell asleep on the job. She said that she's totally available right now. She will have her phone with her at all times and make sure to answer every call. She said that she's fully competent to take care of her mother. 
But in the end, because of everything Avante had going on, the judge decided to hand over power to DSS to make medical decisions in Leonie's care. Part of the reason why this power was taken away from Avante is because Leonie actually has a bank account with a lump sum of more than $15,000, and she may have even more assets that DSS doesn't know about yet. Because of her status, she is obviously unable to make any decisions regarding her finances, which leaves her vulnerable to financial abuse. Clearly, we know that Avante is not above abusing others for her own gain, so Leone needs to be protected to make sure that not only is her physical health being taken care of, but she's not being exploited financially, and that Avante doesn't just let her mother die so that she gets all of her money. Now, at this point, police have not yet announced an official motive for why Avante adopted so many children just so she can abuse and torture them. However, with any case like this, when an adult is taking children into their home, there usually is a financial incentive. Many times, foster parents and parents who adopt children from the system are often paid stipends to help care for those children. However, if those children are not being fed, if they are not being provided their basic needs with that money, or if the child is simply no longer around, then the so-called parent gets to pocket every penny of those checks to spend on themselves. To me, money does seem to be a pretty big motive for these foster parents who just end up neglecting their kids. So they can keep collecting checks and spending the money on whatever they want instead of caring for the child they took in. And clearly, this whole thing worked for Avante for several years because nobody checked in on those kids. Nobody knew what happened to them for four to five years. And Avante just kept getting to live her life, get her money, and continue torturing those kids. At this time, Avante Devon has been charged with two counts of first-degree murder, two counts of child abuse causing serious bodily injury, two counts of disturbing a body, concealment of unnatural death, and one count of kidnapping. The court documents claim that Avante, quote, intentionally inflicted serious bodily injury, starvation, malnutrition on Blake Devon, and kidnapped London Devon without the consent of the victim and for the purpose of doing serious bodily injury to London Devon, terrorizing London Devon. So, you know, the arrest comes several months after Fable police executed search warrants and made gruesome discoveries at several of the homes where those children used to live. Now, as far as the appearance in court today, Avante Devon seemed very calm as she entered the courtroom, stood in front of District Court Judge Caitlin Evans, and the judge read the charges against her. Two counts of first-degree murder, concealment of death, kidnapping, and felony child abuse. Authorities say during their investigation, investigation, they found a metal burn barrel with partial human remains. They believe the children were physically abused uh, by their adoptive mother. Investigators say London uh, Devon died by starvation and neglect. District Attorney Billy West said the case is one of the most heinous he's ever prosecuted. All of us have, have soft spots for children, and the cases with children are the most difficult that we deal with. So the fact that this involved allegations of uh, the abuse and, uh, and the death of children um, was certainly the thing that they grabbed my attention first, particularly the, the manner uh, in which the allegations uh, suggest that they, they died. At this time, that is all we know about this case. We don't yet know what Avante's plea is or if she's even entered a plea. We really don't know any more about the status of this case, if there will be a trial or anything like that. If there is a trial, I'm hoping more information comes out about what exactly those children suffered in that home because I'm sure there is so much more here than everything I've told you up to this point. I do have more questions like, was there a foster father in the home at any point? How was she able to adopt so many kids without the Department of Family and Child Services checking in even once? It's just heartbreaking that so many years passed without anybody knowing what happened to those kids or even noticing that two of them were gone. I hope more information comes out about how this was all able to happen because I know that I want answers, so I know that everybody in their community also want answers. This never should have been allowed to happen, and again, it just hurts my heart to know how badly these children were failed by everyone who were supposed to protect them. But with all of that being said, just like with any case that has loose ends, as more information comes out, I will keep you all up to date, whether it be by updating the description or adding a pinned comment or making a whole new video if there's a lot that comes out. But now I wanna hear what you all think about this case. How do you think so much time passed without anyone finding out about those kids? 
Do you think that second body is Blake? Why do you think she did all of this? Do you think there will be a trial? Let's discuss this and any other thoughts you have in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to go ahead and leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I put out new true crime and mystery videos every single week. Don't forget to turn that notification bell too on so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Make sure you go ahead and follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts now. All of those will be linked down below. And if you have any case suggestions, please make sure to fill up the Google form, which is also listed down below. With that, hope you guys have an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.